Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Dana. I'm a mama to four, two of which I'm currently homeschooling. Right now I have a first grader and a kindergartner. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you kind of how our homeschool year started, where we are now, things that we have changed and things like that. And before we do jump into today's video, I also wanted to mention that this is part of a collaboration hosted by Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool, as well as Davine from Calm in the Chaos. I will have their channels linked down below, so be sure to go check that out, especially if you are wanting some more homeschool encouragement and inspiration. Also linked down below, I will have the playlist of a whole bunch of other mamas that are also going to be sharing kind of how their homeschool years have started and things that they have changed along the way as well. And let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So if you are new here, we actually did welcome our fourth baby back in July. So all of July, we did no homeschool, like none at all. It was great. It was a really, really good opportunity and just a really beautiful time to take it slow, welcome baby, get used to the fourth baby and just kind of, yeah, just cherish those newborn weeks. And then August came and my plan was to just have a very, very light introduction to homeschool because my kids, like I said, had had a solid month and a half off. And so I wanted them to just have a light, a light like little toe in the water, I should say, when it came to homeschooling. So we did start with the intention of having three days a week in August, but we really actually only probably did two on average. I was thinking about the kiddos and kind of what their needs were and they were wanting to kind of get back into a routine and a rhythm because they do miss that whenever we're not homeschooling. That's kind of why I am a fan of doing a very, a very light version of schooling year round because they really love having that structure in the morning and yeah, they did miss that. And so that's kind of why I wanted to start in August doing the three days a week. However, I wasn't thinking about kind of how I was feeling because I should not have started probably in August. Again, the baby was only a few weeks old. I was really trying to figure out a good, I don't know what word I'm looking for, kind of a good pattern, I guess, and a new rhythm for our family, trying to kind of wait for a little bit till things became like the new normal, so to speak, trying to find out what that was for our family and things like that. So we started in August and it was very, very bumpy. It was hard to figure out for me how to do the both kindergarten and first grade level. Both are still needing very hands-on, very in-depth training, especially for their reading skills and things like that. So I was trying to figure out how to do that on top of having the newborn and then a toddler who really really wanted mommy as well so the first couple weeks had a lot of tears to be honest it was very trial and error and it was yeah it was just it was hard it was hard and then trying to figure out how to keep the toddler busy and happy and included and I've shared a couple of videos in the past couple of months here just kind of activities that I love using with her my toddler specifically to kind of keep her busy and entertained but nothing really did the trick until she was like up on the table like in the midst of homeschooling doing the same activity so she likes doing all of her puzzles and everything and her hands-on activities as long as she's like right in the middle of it so it was definitely an adjustment for me like trying to concentrate on reading lessons with two little ones and then like that and everything on top of the newborn but we actually ended up finishing our back porch area and I'll insert a clip here it's really simple but it's a usable space now so we have a table out there we don't have any chairs for it yet but we have our table out there my little guy has a little desk that he's using so with the extra table that we already had the table actually was already there it actually came with the house when we bought it so that was kind of funny but if we've been able to use it a lot now. Anyway, we put that out there and then we set up like a little playroom out there. So it's been amazing. So, so thankful for it because it's kind of an enclosed space so we can shut the doors and we can do our schooling out there. But what is great about it is my two-year-old, because she's in a more smaller space, she feels like she is with us and she's feeling like included, but she free plays a lot more when since we've been out there. So while I am teaching lessons and things like that to the kiddos she just kind of roams around and feels like it, she just she loves it and I'm just like oh praise the Lord for that because it was getting hard trying to be that everything and everything for everyone and so I was so happy that she was more content and happy just playing playing beside us so to speak but her new thing right now is she not only has to be with us and playing with us she has to have a specific school book that looks like the kids in order for her to be like included so <laughs> she's been using my daughter's old CLE light unit. She did finish the kindergarten CLE curriculum. She loved it, did great. But I've been keeping a few of them on hand because my toddler 
loves, loves using them. She will sit down on the floor, she will open up those books, get her crayons out, and just feel so big. So important because she's got a school book too. So anyway, that's how it kind of all started. I was struggling to find that balance. I feel like once we hit the end of August, which by the way, August was also trial and error because our family spent two weeks being really, really sick. So we didn't do part, hardly any school. And then the last week of August, we had some out of town family come in to visit, which was great and it was so much fun to see them. But again, we took half of that week off anyway um, to hang out with them and visit with them. So. Yeah, so I think all together for all of August, we only had maybe a solid week and a half, maybe two weeks worth of school, but that was it. And honestly, I'm really thankful for that because we all, we needed to give ourselves more grace and more flexibility to be able to work out the kinks and figure out what worked best for our family. And looking back, and it's funny because I started this video thinking I was going to say something like, oh, I wish we would, would not have started in August. But right now I'm kind of glad that we did because it gave us a whole month of trial and error, working things out, the bumps and curves and trying to figure that out before we really started in September because we have started back full time. Right now it's four, four, maybe five days a week right now. It depends. The kids love doing it and I love that they love doing it. And so for that fifth day, because ideally I was really only going to start with four days in September, they still want to do it. Like when, when Wednesday comes, because Wednesday is typically our day off from doing school, they still want to do it. So I'm like, well, that's awesome. So if they ask to do it, then we will go ahead and do it. But it's been going great in September because all of August was, as I mentioned before, that trial and error month for sure. But September has been going great. I have been loving, loving this season of life. I finally have found the rhythm that works best for our family. And that really is honestly just being flexible and working around baby schedule and things like that instead of the other way around. So that's been great. It's been a beautiful, beautiful few weeks and the kiddos have been thriving on it and they just, they just love it. And I'm so glad that they do. I'm really thankful for that. So for curriculum, the couple of things that we have actually changed, they were actually completely, completely my fault. I did not do my due diligence apparently when it came to researching what needed to be when and introduced anyway. Long story short, my kindergartner who finished her entire CLE kindergarten curriculum, she loved it, she did great. We actually moved her on to the Good and the Beautiful level K as well. She was not quite ready for the first grade level. And the reason why we chose to put her in the Good and the Beautiful level K is because even the new version of the Good and the Beautiful level K is still slightly above grade level. It is exactly, exactly what she was ready for. So, I am very, very thankful for that. Like I said, the CLE curriculum was amazing and phenomenal and she loved it, but because there wasn't a ton of introduction to reading, even though all the letters were learned and all the letters were like, all the writing was done and everything like that, the Good and the Beautiful program for Level K was just really what she was ready for. And so we decided to, we decided to do that one again. And the new version we have been, we have been loving the new edition of the Level K. So she has two. So this is the one that she is currently doing. I believe she is on lesson. Yeah, she just finished lessons eight and nine. But if you are not familiar with the CLE program, they already did a lot of like the beginning words here. So they already learned how to do like the letter blends and everything. But if your little ones are doing the CLE uh, kindergarten curriculum, this is actually a fantastic switch to bump up a grade, but they're not quite ready for that first grade reading level. This is fantastic because like I said, this is above above grade level, so to speak. So she's been having a lot of fun and a lot of it is still like the fun hands-on things that she likes. So my little guy didn't like doing all the extra hands-on activities. He just wanted to do his reading lesson and then be done. But she loves it. Like she really, really loves it. And one of the things that I also love about the new edition of the Good and the Beautiful Level K, it's actually two things. But the first thing that I'm loving and that's new for this version specifically are the reading booster cards. The old version did have like these little cards that you could pop out and they had reading practice and sight words, letter blends, but they were a lot of work to pop them out and prep. And it wasn't like a big deal, but it was just prep work that involved like the teacher doing. So I was really happy to see this because it gives all the practice that they need for all the lessons. So the first lesson, you're gonna practice all of your vowels and then they're gonna go across the lines here and read all the letters and then they're gonna do letter blends and it's just great. So right now she's on card two. 
actually no she's on card three so for card three she's learning how to start with a word and then blend the full sentence by the bottom so she loves these and it is honestly just a fantastic addition to the new version my favorite favorite thing and i'm probably gonna get all of the ones in this series because i love it they're beautiful if you are not new here then you will know why i love this but this is my first nature reader and this is for my kindergartner and i love this because first of all this is a hard copy like actual hardbound book so the quality is amazing but my little girl loves this because she really feels like she's reading a like a big kid book when she's when she's reading it but the illustrations are beautiful as are all of the illustrations from the good and beautiful it's just very very simple as you can tell and it's at her level so she loves it she's been loving loving it so it's just really really fun and like i said i'll probably end up getting all of the books from this series as she advances in her reading but she loves it and she is advancing very very quickly with it like she can read the first five chapters already from here and yeah she just is a huge fan and that makes me a huge fan which is a plus and then I did get two of the things for her that was an addition. I did get the Reading Booster A books. This is like the new version of those little books that go along with the curriculum. But as you can tell, there's just a lot of books in here. So she'll always pick one. And she just finished this one. She loved this one. But the words are just so simple and just really designed for the grade level that she is in. So she has been loving it. And she just feels like such a big girl when she is when she is doing these. So I love this. She's been loving it. And again, I feel like when the kiddos actually love a curriculum and they want to do more school and sometimes because she did get a really amazing foundation using the CLE kindergarten curriculum she's able to do like two lessons a day sometimes three lessons a day so we've only been doing it because she just did finish her other curriculum we're on lesson eight but this is only our second week into it so she really she really is enjoying it so that's a plus but yeah, that was the main change that I got for my kindergartner. I honestly did not even order that curriculum until we were two weeks in when I realized, okay, she's not ready for this one yet. This is more designed for first grade, which is why my first grader is currently doing it. He's actually on light unit 104 right now. I did get this intentionally for my kindergartner until I opened it up and I realized a few light units in that this was not really what she was quite ready for. It was beyond grade level, I think, for her and what she had already done. She did, like I mentioned, do the entire level K kindergarten. That's why I think the good and the beautiful level K, because it is above grade level, is again, right where she should be. But this is actually what my first grader is using and he is loving it, which again, if he loves the curriculum or if the kids love their curriculum, I'm always so thankful for that. But anyway, he is loving this. He's advancing really, really quickly in reading. I know that was something that we were really struggling with at the beginning of the year, not necessarily with advancing in reading, but just trying to find the joy in it, I should say, and having it not be so much like work. And this curriculum does a really, really good job with having just like the basic necessities for learning how to read but also just keeping the fun in it and having the fun activities. He loves these little activities down here that have like the connected dots and they actually get pretty advanced, but he is going really, really quickly through this. So we'll be able to move on to the actual language arts here probably in the next month or so. So he's been loving this and beyond the good and the beautiful and then realizing that my kindergartner was not ready for this, but my first grader was, was a really, really good uh, transition for us. And again, I think honestly, everything has flowed together just beautifully this year. It really, really has. But yeah, those were the main changes in our homeschool this year. Those two curriculum switches, which again, surprised me those first two weeks. And I was like, okay, this is not working. <laughs> and that was why. And anyway, so we did those. And then again, the only other change is we added that extra space in our home for a fun homeschool space. When in reality, it's kind of funny that um, we create like a homeschool room in this ideal space. When in reality, the kids like doing it all over the house. So <laughs> we still do, you know, do our little school picnics and things like that by throwing a blanket on the floor and just all kinds of fun things. But yeah, that is a fun, a fun new addition in our home. Well guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed kind of hearing how our homeschool year started, where we are right now. And I'm again, loving this season. It's beautiful. I'm so glad that we've kind of found our new rhythm and everything like that. I did actually share our homeschool, this year's homeschool rhythm, or should I say our homeschool routine. I'll have that link down below if you do want to see kind of what that looks like for us and in this stage of life and everything. But it's been, it's been great, but I hope you guys did enjoy it and be sure to go check out those videos and the playlist down below. I will have the link for you to check out. And until my next video, you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless. Bye.